Um, hello and uh, welcome. This is SFU Math 232. It's Brenda Davison. Um, this is uh, the last three pages of my uh, section uh, 2.2, Solving Linear Systems by Row Reduction. So the video was clipped uh, when the whole thing was uh, uploaded somehow, and these last three pages were missing. So I'm just going to re-record those last three pages and post this as an addendum. So this is, uh, um, for those of you with my skeleton lecture notes, those are section uh, item number 10, 11, and 12. The ones that were part of the lecture notes, but were missing off of the end of the video. Thanks to you guys for pointing that out to me. Okay, so we're just going to uh, right here just to have a summary of uh, the linear system, solving linear systems. So what do we do when we're solving a linear system? Step one, uh, we form the augmented matrix. Okay. That is step one. Okay, uh, step two, uh, we perform Gaussian elimination. Okay, this gets us to the uh, row echelon form. At this point, we look and check for the no solution. Okay, what does that look like? That will look like this. You'll you'll be in your row echelon form and you'll have a bunch of stuff all over the place and you will have a row that looks like this. This thing here will be not zero. It doesn't have to be five. Not zero. Any not zero number uh, right there. So you have basically uh, a row with all zeros, and then you have a non-zero thing there, and you're in your row echelon form. As soon as you see that, you're you're done for. Okay, so then you stop. Stop. No solution. Okay, then what do you do? You do have a choice. You continue. Uh, you continue the um, changing the augmented matrix. So that would be you continue in the uh, the Gaussian or it's actually called now, then we would continue the Gauss-Jordan elimination. And you would uh, end up, uh, if you do that, then you end up with the reduced row echelon form. Uh, if you decide you don't want to do that, you, you, you are here with the Gauss and back substitution. Those are your two options. Okay, so then you have two possibilities. You've already eliminated the no solution uh, uh, possibility. Uh, then you have the uh, possibility uh, that uh, when you're here, you have a whole bunch of stuff, and then you have one or more rows that are all zeros. That's a possibility. Or you have, or you have, uh, you have uh, otherwise identified uh, free variables. Okay, that would be the case where you have something that looks like this. Uh, you have mm, like this one five or something like that, and then you have one zero zero zero. Zero, 06 and then you have zero, 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 0001010 zero, okay you don't have any rows with all zeros but in this case you have uh two um uh free variables okay so you uh, you have either get a row with all zeros uh which which will imply a free variable anyways or basically so you, uh, you one way of recognizing it is this but basically the other thing is you identify free variables then you have an infinite supply of solutions, and then the other the other possibility is that you have a situation where you have your your uh, form looking something whatever like this. Uh, let's just so you continue right through with, for example, the Gauss Jordan elimination, and you end up so that you have the same number of leading variables as you do columns. Okay, no free variables. This is unique solution. Okay. 
and then uh, you uh, simply uh, write out what the solution is. If it's no solution, you say no solution. If there's uh, infinite supply in this model here, you parameterize them. And if there's a unique solution, you say what it is. That's the basic, that is the basic model. Okay, we've gone through quite a few examples. And uh, so the best thing now is just uh, to practice. Okay, a few things that we, we just want to emphasize, just a, a bit of vocabulary and, and, and whatnot. And I, this did come up earlier, but let us just remind ourselves, a linear system is called homogeneous if all of its equations are homogeneous, which means that the last column of the augmented matrix consists only of zeros. So the, the augmented matrix will look like this. How many ever there are, and this is blah, doesn't matter. Whatever, what this can, I don't, I don't, I don't care what this is, blah, blah, there. Okay, and, but, but, uh, all of these are zeros. This corresponds to the, the idea where, you know, each equation will, will look like this. Equals zero. And then the, whatever the next equation is, and this is going to be true for all of them. Equals zero. They're all equal to zero. Okay. All the equations are equal to zero. That That's what leads to the... Mm, this column in the augmented matrix being filled with zeros, and uh, that is a homogeneous system. And every homogeneous solution has one solution, and that solution is x equals zero. Okay, uh, right? I mean, it just I mean, it's kind of obvious looking at this thing now. If I if I stick x1 and x2, blah blah. At all to x n is equal to zero. Clearly, the whole thing is going to come out to zero. So a homogeneous uh, uh, linear system has at least one solution, and that is the trivial solution. I maybe also could write that like this, like that. Okay, so if there are other solutions in addition to that trivial solution, we call them non-trivial. So these will have numbers in them. These will, these will, uh, x, x will not be equal to the zero vector. It may have some zeros in it, but there'll be at least one non-zero uh, entry in the vector uh, x. Okay, next point, if a homogeneous system, so we're in a homogeneous system, has some non-trivial solution, then it must have infinitely many because you could just multiply through any solution uh, by a scalar and, and obtain another solution. Okay, so let us just maybe also say, um, if you, you're, you're, you're here in the homogeneous system, uh, you, you have a trivial solution, That is the x equals zero solution. You also have a non-trivial solution. You have you have here. Uh, you're being told you have one non-trivial solution. So you now so at least here you have at least two solutions. And what does that mean? You have at least two solutions. Well, we only have we only have three possibilities, right? We can have zero solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. That's it. And now I've showed that there's at least two. So we're bigger than one. So we just, that right away then means there's infinite solutions. Okay. Right, so the homogeneous uh, um, thing always has, uh, uh, it either has uh, one solution or, I'm sorry, it either has, yeah, it either has one or an infinite supply. It never has zero solutions. Okay, that's what this thing is saying here. The homogeneous linear system has only the trivial solution, that would be the one solution, or it has infinitely many. It, there, there's, there, it, there, it's not the case where there's no solution. Okay. Since it always has a solution, you cannot have a row of zeros everywhere with the last column being a non-zero because that indicates no solution. And so that can't happen because we know we have at least one solution. That is the trivial solution. And then that because of that same thing, it means that uh, all non every each of the non-zero rows in the row reduced echelon form contains a leading variable. That has to happen because the no solution cannot happen. Let's just make a note of that. Because the no solution option is off the table. 
can't happen. Okay, so that's uh, homogeneity. Uh, it is actually uh, quite important uh, for us to um, distinguish between the homogeneous system and the non-homogeneous system. Because what we're going to find sometimes we can do is, is solve the homogeneous system and then use that information to uh, help us to solve the non-homogeneous system. This is true in, in systems of differential equations as well. Okay, next point, uh, this uh, dimension theorem. Uh, the dimension theorem states that if a homogeneous a linear system has n unknowns, and if the reduced rho echelon form of its augmented matrix has r non-zero rows, then the system has r leading variables and n minus r free variables. Let's just take a couple of examples here to, to see what this means. I'm just going to draw a couple of augmented matrices. Here's one. Okay. okay, let's see. How many unknowns are here? n equals 3. That's the number of unknowns. This is x1, x2, x3. There's three unknowns. Okay, and let's take a look at uh, how many uh, leading variables there are. Three leading variables. That is r equals 3. Uh, that is the... Um, uh, leading variables. So that is, uh, I have, th th uh, so this is the number of leading variables. It's also the number of non-zero rows. Leading variables. It's also the number of non-zero rows. Okay, and in this case, you can see that uh, n minus r, n minus r is zero. So there's no free variables. No free variables. Okay, that's what this is telling us. Okay, so let's just take a second example. We'll, we'll have this one here. Uh, one, 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 two, and zero, zero, one, zero, and zero, 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 zero. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening here. We've got two uh, leading variables. And we've got uh, uh, n is equal to 3 still. That's the number of unknowns. R is the number of non-zero rows or the number of leading variables. And so I can see that here R is equal to 2. I've got one zero row. I've got R equals to 2. So, and then I've got here um, uh, n minus R is equal to 1. So I know that there is one free variable. And in, the, in, the, in this thing that I've outlined here, it is uh, x2. So it's this one here. Yeah. x2 is free. OK. All right. Uh, that's, that's the dimension theorem. OK, and then we've got one final uh, thing to say here. It's a, it's a theorem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of Put little, I'm, I'm going to state why this is true. It's not really going to be much what I would really consider a rigorous proof, but I'm going to be try to be as convincing as possible by waving my hands around and saying things that are true. Okay, so here's the theorem. A homogeneous linear system uh, with more unknowns than equations has infinitely many solutions. So it's a homogeneous linear system. So we already know that it can't have one solution. Sorry, let's try that again. Can't have no solutions. You can't have no solution because we know that x equals zero is a solution, so it has at least one. Okay. Now it's saying it's saying it, uh, we've ruled that case out already. Now we're saying we have more unknowns than equations. Let me just uh, draw an example of what this looks like. More unknowns than equations. So here, here's an example of what that looks like. Okay, here's, here's a system of linear equations. We have got two, three, four unknowns. And we have got one, two equations. Okay, so this is a situation, uh, four unknowns, uh, two un equations. Okay, so uh, what is the maximum number 
the maximum number of leading variables is equal to the number of equations. Okay, right? I mean, I could have a leading leading uh, uh, one in this row and I could have a leading one in this row. There's nowhere else to have a leading one in a row because there's no more rows. So the maximum number of leading variables is the number of equations. Okay, uh, we know that the number of, uh, let's see, the number of unknowns, and what have we previously called that? The number of unknowns, we've called that little n. So we know that the number of un unknowns n is greater than uh, the maximum number of leading variables. Let me just call this, I don't know, leading variables. What do we just call this L? Maximum number of leading uh, variables. So that means that N minus L has to be uh, greater than zero. And this is a uh, an expression that tells you how many free variables there are. Okay, so I know that there's more than zero uh, free variables. So there's one or more free variables. So there exists free variables. There is actually somewhat of two possibilities at that point. There's infinitely many solutions, or possibly there could be no solution. But I've already ruled that out. Can't have no solution. So that is it. So this is the, the no solution thing here, which would be the other possibility, has already been ruled out. So that means that there is an infinite supply of solutions. Okay, so the, the homogeneous uh, one has a, a couple of wrinkles uh, to it that you want to keep track of. Okay, now this really does conclude uh, section um, 2.2. I will be posting this shortly and, and please, uh, please watch section 2.3 over the weekend. Bye!